about arrhythmias and the reason why I chose arrhythmias to speak about it because arrhythmias are just one of those things I never quite understand um, some very smart person will probably teach it to me and then I'll be like oh I get it and then I won't remember it because uh, their methods were a little bit more complex and it include a lot of um, tiny details that we're not supposed to know as med students i mean we're supposed to know it but when we're taking our quick ships or just for step to ck we don't need the details we just need to know how to identify the arrhythmia how to treat the arrhythmia nothing more broad than what a cardiologist would tell you online or something so when it comes to arrhythmias um there are just a s simple things that we need to um remember or simple things that we need to know before we go into the arrhythmias and i will take this time out to um just show you so the, just two things we need to know or three things sorry so the first thing we need to know is um what is the pr um interval so pr interval um is described as um let me just get my pen ready so the pr interval is the distance between um this p wave right here and this is normally um three small boxes so it's normally three small boxes Right? And then the other thing we need to know is what is a QRS um, interval. So the QRS interval is from Q to here. So this is about four small boxes. So right now we just need to know um, what the PR interval, the length of the PR interval, which is about three small boxes, and the length of the QRS um, um, segment, which is about four small boxes. Now, um, some people may make this a little bit more difficult and not use small boxes. So if we know that one of those tiny boxes is just... Um, 0 0.04 seconds so 0 0.04 seconds if we multiply three small boxes by um, 0 0.03 it'll be 0 0.12 seconds and then if you multiply four by 0 0.04 seconds it'll be 0 0.14 seconds but for now we just need to stick to the boxes because on the exam nobody's gonna ask you um seconds or whatever there um you just need to know this for yourself i need to understand that uh, it's pr segment is three small boxes and pr segment is four small boxes now i draw this a little hard here just to be creative just to make us um to make it feel a little bit cartoonish so we can um be more comfortable around it so just ignore it if, um just ignore it so remember this is the first thing we need to know and the second thing we need to know is what is sinus what does sinus mean so in here this is a normal sinus rhythm so what does that mean sinus means be, be, um, before every qrs complex there is a p wave so here is a qrs complex there is a p wave here is a qrs complex there is a p wave here is a qrs complex here is a p wave so this is what sinus means so what does normal mean Normal means that in order for us to understand what normal means, we first need to um, calculate the heart rate. Now, how do we find heart rate on the EKG? We simply just divide 300 by the number of large boxes or big boxes, big boxes between an RR interval. So here's an RR interval. Here's R, here's an R, and here's another R. So between that is one, two, three. So between um, those are our in intervals. So it's going to be 300 divided by 3, which is just 100 um, beats per minute. So this is normal. So anything above 100 would be tachycardia, and everything below 100 will be bradycardia. So this is where the normal part, not normal sinus rhythm comes from. Now, um, we need to understand why we had to know um, uh, the length of the QRS complex. So here I divided my, um, when we talk about arrhythmias, there are fast rhythms and then there are slow rhythms, right? So the fast rhythms can further be broken down into those that have narrow QRS complexes, which is less than four boxes, and those that have um, wider QRS complexes, which is more than four small boxes, okay? So these are the narrow ones and these are the... Um, large or wide ones right so now let's just take a look at our first rhythm now the first rhythm uh, remember the first thing we have to calculate is the rate so if we were just to just pick an r interval so here and here so that's between these two r's is just two so 300 divided by two is 150 so 150 beats per minute is um a tachycardia right now um before it, uh, each of the QRS complexes, one, there's a P wave, here's a P wave, here's a P wave. So this is 
sinus tachycardia, right? Now, let's just take a look at our second um, supraventricular, our second um, arrhythmia. So if we were just to take um, an hour interval, here and here. So again, it's just two boxes, 300 divided by two is 150. Now, we need to um, check whether there are P waves. So we may be tempted to say that there, um, this is a P wave, but if this is a P wave, for this gyrus complex and this is the t wave um, for this gyrus complex right so where is the p wave for this gyrus complex so this rhythm has no p waves so there are no p waves and there are no p waves right now so this rhythm is tachycardic and there are no p waves and the r intervals are regular or they're the same length so this is what we call as a superventricular tachycardia whenever the rhythm is fast the um QRS complex is narrow and there are no P waves, it's a supraventricular tachycardia. Now this is important because um, there are other rhythms that um, if we take that look similar to this, right? So if we take the um, atrial fibrillation between these RR intervals, it's um, two boxes. So 300 divided by two is 150 again, right? And Again, there are no P waves, so there are no discernible P waves. So there are no P waves just like this one. Just like the supraventricular tachycardia, there, um, um, there is tachycardia, no P waves, narrow QRS complexes, because this one is also narrow. However, the RR intervals are irregular. This is not the same length as this. This RR interval is not the same distance as this R interval. So when the um, RR intervals are irregular and there is tachycardia and no P waves, this is atrial fibrillation, okay? Now we're going into the wide um, QRS complexes. Wide. So if we look at these rhythms, um, it's just wide, like it's just big. This is definitely more than, um, this is definitely more than four small boxes between those R intervals, okay? So here we have it. When the R intervals are, um, or the QRS complexes are more than four small boxes. So if we remember, the first thing we have to calculate is the distance. So if we took this one and this one, so there's just this two small box, two big boxes. So three, again, 300 divided by two is 150. So this is definitely tachycardic. And the um, QRS complex is wide. And then the distance is regular. So this is ventricular tachycardia. However, um, if we were to do the same thing here, um, so if we were to take a distance here and a distance here, this is less than one box. So this is approaching 300 um, bits per minute. And the rhythm is most likely um, irregular. So this is what is a um, ventricular arrhythmia, right? And here, if we take an R interval, this is definitely... Um, um, one small box, um, sorry, one big box, so it's about approaching 300 bits per minute. And we can see similarities between ventricle arrhythmia and um, to a set the point. However, in a ventricular arrhythmia, this stays on one straight line. But if to a the point, there are places of um, decrease and then increase, as you can see, decrease and increase and decrease and increase. So it's twisting of the points, as you would say in French. Now we are going to talk about the slow rhythms, right? So in the slow rhythms, um, it's simple. Remember, the first thing you need to calculate is um, the heart rate. Now, in the slow rhythms, um, we don't have to worry about the QRS complexes. However, we need to worry about the PR intervals. So QRS complex um, width was mostly for fast rhythms, but PR intervals is for slow rhythms. Okay, so if we were to get the RR interval between those um, things, so it'd be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, uh, nine and a half. So 300 divided uh, nine and a half is 31 beats per minute. So this is 31 beats per minute. And by anything less than 60 is bradycardia. Now, 
we have P waves be before each QRS complex. So this is sinus bradycardia. Okay. And the um, so this is sinus bradycardia. And the PR interval, I know it's really, um, you really can't see it here, but the PR interval, remember, has to be less than three small boxes, and this is definitely less than three small boxes. So this is just um, regular sinus bradycardia. You can get it when you're sleeping, when you're um, tired, you can get sinus bradycardia. Okay, so the next rhythm we're going to talk about is this one. Okay, so we look at the um, strip, the R interval. So the between those R intervals, there's one, two, three, four, four and a half. So 300 divided by four and a half is, um, did I calculate this right? One, two, three, four. Yeah. So this is um, 66 beats per minute. And this is um, um, a bradycardiac. It's, remember I said 60 is um, a little bit. Um, normal, but this one is definitely bradycardiac. Um, so let's do this again. So here we have. Um, let me just calculate one, two, three, four. Okay. So, so this is definitely um, bradycardiac. However, if we check the R intervals, which is right here, this is greater than four small boxes. If we're greater than small four boxes and the rr interval remains the same for all sorry the pr interval remains the same for all so when there is um bradycardia and a, a constant prolongation of the rr interval this is first degree av block right however in the second degree av block if we were to check this this is definitely bradycardia like this is like one two three four five six seven seven and a half so 300 